everyone. It's Tina Reynolds with Uptown Studios Live, and I am thrilled to be here uh, with Melanie Harrison um, Okoro, PhD. PhD, I'm impressed. It's like, that's a lot of work to get that. Welcome. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here and, and chat with you. Well, I want to know, uh, tell me just, so we have never met before, but I'm already, I'm already in the mutual admiration society of you, all the things that you've accomplished. Um, the work that you do is about creating community change. I love it. I love it. I know we're going to be friends after this thing. It's like, we're going to be connected. I know we are. Well, well, I'm again. I'm excited to be here and chat with you about you know some of the things that we're doing, a little bit about our company, and um, you know we're we're just excited to be a part of the community in Sacramento. So thanks for having us. Oh, so thrilled! Um, tell me a little bit about how uh, how a little girl Mel decided <laughs> to go uh, to college. Tell me, you know, give me a short synopsis of your last how quick it happened. Not quick at all, probably. Sure, I I grew up in a rural Alabama, uh, Tuskegee, uh, Alabama, with my twin sister and my great grandmother. And she was what I would call a fisherwoman. So every Saturday, she wake us up in the morning, very early, uh, and take us fishing. And so that was really my first experience with the environment um, and being able to, you know, catch what you eat and cook it. And um, at the time, I didn't, I didn't realize um, how important it would be to shaping uh, where I am today. But right. when, I, when I look back on it, it, it was um, vital um, for me becoming the person that I am. So, yeah. So, so you're in Tuskegee. Where did you go to college first? I went to college at a historically black uh, university in Charlotte, North Carolina, Johnson C. Smith University. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and at that college, I met my first ecology uh, professor and his name was Dr. Fail. <laughs> oh, oh my God, that's a name. Yeah. And, um, you know, he was a tough cookie, uh, but he was an extraordinary ecologist. And he really shaped um, my thinking around the area and the field and really, uh, really introduced me to it and, and, and got me interested in it. So you were you were a science girl? I was. I, I've always been a science girl, been pretty good at it. I just really enjoy it. Um, mostly about the things that I cannot see. Um, so my background is um, in uh, microorganisms and biogeochemistry and understanding how, you know, they influence everything from uh, air, water, and soil. So that that was really my first, um, first excitement around the field. So you graduate and then you decide to go further. You know, I graduate uh, and the next year I was accepted into a medical school in, in Wake Forest. And at the end of the year, I get a call from one of my old mentors and he says, Melanie, what are you doing? And I said, ah, I'm in medical school. And he says, what are the heck are you doing there? And I said, I don't know. I don't know. Help me. He, he says, you know, I have a PhD program. Um, I, out of the University of Maryland, uh, Baltimore County, UNBC, Go Retrievers. And um, he says, I'd love for you to be my, my graduate student, my doctorate student there. And I said, sign me up. I'm in. So it was that quick. It was easy. It, was, it, was, it wasn't an easy process. Um, it was, but the decision to go was a fair the, decision. The go, go was easy. And then yeah. the classes were hard. Yeah. The getting the getting the PhD and how long did that take? It took me five years to get the PhD in environmental and marine science, and um, you know, probably a, one of the most difficult times in my life. Quite frankly, very rigorous and challenging, but um, just uh, met an amazing group of people and mentors and and peers that are my friends to this day. You know, and that's the way that it goes, isn't it? You find all these like-minded people and then you just col collect them. Right. And, you know, it's a collection. It's like, oh, I, I can call so-and-so and so-and-so and, -so -and, -so and we can get together. It's like um, just before this, we were talking about I'm on the Environmental Justice Coalition. Mm -hmm. 
and how I'm going to tap you uh, for information because we're making recommendations to the city of Sacramento on what we should be doing. So it goes from Fisher Girl to uh, microbiologist to to joining um, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA Fisheries uh, in Santa Rosa, California, to be oh. a specialist, right? So just a really great opportunity to come out and work for an amazing organization. Um, and the administration, one of its focuses is on stewardship of trust resources. And so that was vitally important for me um, and where at the time I saw myself um, having a, a, a fantastic career with NOAA. So um, with uh, trust resources, is this land trust? Everything from, or see, you know, where you're, you can't develop this land. Well, specifically, this is our trust resources include fisheries, right? Oh. Threatened and endangered species like coho salmon. Uh-huh and uh, the Russian River uh, watershed, um, and then protection of their critical habitat, so the areas in which they live in. Ah, okay. So remind me, I have to talk to you about Russian River after we're off. Sure. sure. Um, so you finish, at, you finish there, and then when did you start Eco Alpha? Is that so, next? It's that next. It's next. It's the next big transition, which uh, for me, I can tell you my time at NOAA, I love the colleagues and the people that I work with. Again, they're friends to this day. So transitioning from a place that I thought was um, a place that I would spend the rest of my career um, uh, with to starting my own business was um, a life-changing event for me. And I'm happy that it happened. Started in 2013 uh -huh. and then in 2017, my husband joined the business and we added the environmental services division. And so we are now what you see today, Eco Alpha Environmental and Engineering Services. So tell me about some of the work that you do. So specifically, um, I'll, I'll just give uh, an example. We work with, for example, the city of West Sacramento. We uh -huh. help them monitor uh, their current uh, water uh, systems for pollutants of concern. And we help them really meet their permitting requirements. So we submit all the reports and do all of the ah. and really help keep them um, within compliance. And they're a, a fantastic organization that we work with. It's not really um, that difficult to do because they're very on top of it. So really, we're just there to help them, support them and guide them. Um, we've also worked with the California High Speed Rail Authority. Ah. Providing, oh, you know, here we are with Biden. And what is he just said? Three trillion dollars for infrastructure. Here you go. It looks like you're going to have a boom. It's a, and it's it's exciting time. It's the we are a small business working on the first ever mega transportation project across the nation. Wow! And wow. So it is an unbelievable uh, task at hand for the individuals and small businesses that are working. Uh, on the project. And um, again, it's just, a, I think it's a really great opportunity for small businesses to get involved uh, and engage on a longstanding process. Sure. So talking about West Sacramento, are you out in the field um, pulling tests? Are you? So we have technicians, an environmental technician um, that works with us. He goes out in the field, he collects water samples, um, he makes observations, uh, writes reports, and um, it, it, it's really a great process because we've been able to, to um, work with UC Davis um, oh. and bring in their students um, as environmental technicians in our company has been is vital for us as a small business. Um, oh, yeah. Excellent students. So. How, how fun, how fun for them too. Um, so with the, um, the environmental uh, aspects of um, transit, how, what, you're going from water to transit. Are you talking about how it's affecting the spaces around them? Tell me more about um, well, what you're looking at. Specifically for the project that we worked on, and it is really an ongoing project. So I'll just talk very broadly sure. about um, the work. 
we're really uh, just taking a look at what it's going to take to operate and, and run those facilities over time, right? And providing your expertise, Tina, as I'm sure um, you've talked about with the city, coming in and consulting and providing mm -hmm. your recommendations on what you think uh, really is the proper way to address um, currently what's going on, but operations uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. and then, so, uh, is it uh, with an emphasis on sustainability? It really is it's it's like on safety. Safety, okay. It's an emphasis on safety and an emphasis on compliance. Ah, and okay. The okay. environmental sustainability piece really comes within a different division um, within uh, high speed rail on a separate project that we're not involved in. Ah, but, but you know it's there. But we know it's there, and we know that there are going to be impacts to the environment. But the goal of the entire project is to make sure that project moves forward um, in the most environmentally safe manner that it can. And so there mm -hmm. are tons of uh, experienced individuals that are working on that process right now. So are you doing any COVID research, like on the wastewater? I mean, it's, 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 an, it's actually, uh, as you can imagine, it's a new trajectory in wastewater. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, I'm so interested in it, hearing it in the news, mm -hmm. how they can identify clusters. Um, so, by, yeah. By so, so right now there's just quite a bit of information out there and workshops and, rev and, and webinars on COVID as it relates to wastewater. But again, it's, it, it is a new process. And so there are new techniques that are currently being developed in order to uh, test and analyze and then, you know, identify what the impacts are uh, to the public. Uh -huh. It's definitely an ongoing process. So could you do that kind of work? Would that be something that you're... If, there were, if there were techniques that were available for us to do that, absolutely. Ah, uh, okay. Absolutely. Okay. It's just, um, it's so interesting to learn about what you do in your day to day and how diverse it can be. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and wow. Right. And so right. it's like you're working on high speed rail and uh, water treatment in West Sac. And what other things are you working on? Well, so what I'm really excited, Tina, to, to chat with you about and to share is our energy bearing program um, that was just supported by the the Sacramento Collaborative Initiative for focusing on training uh, individuals in the Sacramento Promise Zone on energy management best practices. How to, quite frankly, upskill a workforce in an industry that's in need of skilled workers. And so we've been, um, we've had the opportunity to work with organizations such as the Sacramento Black Chamber of Commerce Ah. The housing and uh, Redevelopment Agency, as well as the Sacramento Promise Zone Initiative, SMUD, Golden One, um, and others to help bring this training um, to the community. So talk about the training. What are you training? Are you training individuals or is it small businesses? So we're training individuals. We're training individuals specifically in the Sacramento uh, Promise Zones on first energy management best practices and fundamentals. We're giving them an opportunity to come together as a cohort and uh, tour facilities uh, in the area, whether virtually or in person. Um, uh -huh. We're giving them an opportunity to network with employers who are looking to uh, for job placement. And we're providing them with an opportunity to see new technologies in the industry of energy management. For oh, wow. wow. So it really is a great eight week program that uh, we start April the 10th and run from May to May 31st, where we just have an opportunity to share our passions with the community and train them on what we believe is the future of engineering for energy management. So who are you looking for to sign up? We're looking for those that are um, 18 uh, years and older with a GED or high school diploma. You do not necessarily have to be in the promise zone, but we really are looking to target those uh, individuals that live and work in the community um, to really give back to those uh, areas that have been economically disadvantaged. 
Um, I serve on uh, uh, SETA Youth Advisory Board, and it's always job placement. Have you worked with them at all? I have not, but I'm interested to partner well, work with those who, okay. who really want to bring training. I'll introduce, you, I'll introduce you to them uh, because it's the perfect place to get, because they're looking for placements and trainings. So this sounds like another match that we can make. Absolutely. And we're open. Applications are open um, right now. And we'd love to connect with them so that they have an opportunity to apply. Okay. And so they have to have a high school diploma? Or GED. High or GED. School diploma or GED. Okay. And are you getting enough people to apply? Right now, we're, we're working to get individuals. We have 15 uh, slots uh, that we're looking to fill. Um, and we're currently filling those slots as we speak. I know I talk with you about having interviews right now, but what we're looking for is um, we're looking for participants that are really energized and wanting to further their career, learn about new industries and, and get the experience. So, Man, this would be a perfect, perfect entree into a whole new field that's just going to boom. It's just going to boom. So um, we'll have to uh, offline or... Uh, well, we've got your ticker here on um, where to go to get more information, but we'll help promote this uh, signups on our social media that, you know, we'll give you an uptown bump. Uh, and, and that's what we love. And thank you so much. Sure. And introduce you to SETA. They have people that they might be able to send over to get enrolled. Um, we also work with uh, Sacramento County Youth Coalition. Um yeah. They do. Uh, they have a lot of members that are Saturday night, uh, Friday night live, young people. Okay. Um, so there's other places that we can do some outreach and see if we can get you some more signups. Well, fantastic, fantastic. Fill you up and then have waiting for the next one and the next one. Absolutely, absolutely. So the training takes them through. Talk a little bit about the training. What does it take them through? So the training, the training will take them through um, the fundamentals of energy, right? So we want to make sure that everyone has a basic level of understanding of what the definition of energy means with respect to facilities. And then we're going to talk about the principles, right? So we'll talk about things like um, energy demand, energy usage. Um, uh -huh. We go through um, some, some calculations and a little bit of math and engineering. But it's a it's a great uh, first entree into the field. And then we expose them to case studies. So we have sim simulations and demos that we take them through. We want them to work in a cohort with their different um, experiences and expertise to solve a problem in energy management. And then we're going to show them in the field really how we operate and maintain these facilities. And, and what are the job opportunities when they finish this training? They get a certificate? So the first step is that they they need to complete the course, of course, uh -huh. and get their certificate as an energy baron. And then for those that are eligible, we work with them for job placement uh, in, the, in the industry, either with uh, our collaborative uh, partners or with, with Eco Alpha or the employers that we've invited who are looking for individuals with this skill uh, in the workforce. That's so, awesome. It's a full circle. It's a full circle for us. Having uh, through my uh, undergraduate all the way up through my professional career, be, being involved in various trainings and certifications, really the Energy Baron prog program is a culmination of all of the elements of training that have worked. Uh, yeah. We think have worked. So whether it's exposure, outreach opportunities, networking with um, other peers in the industry, um, mentorship, um, and simply uh, having a network of individuals you can connect with. That's probably one of the most important aspects of the program. And how is this working uh, virtual? How, how are you doing? We, we're, we're, you know what? We're going to be okay. And you know why, Tina? Because as you know, in your, your industry, that's where we're going. Yeah, and yeah. So we have to adapt. You know, it's been a year, and we went remote, and I don't think we're coming back. And I've got 19 team members, and uh, what they want is to come back maybe once a month for a lunch. 
a team lunch when we all can be in 3D together. Right. Um, but they all seem happy working from home. It's like I can throw a load of laundry in and I can come back and work and I have kids and things are just better. Uh, but missing that person to person. Um, have you done some of these trainings yet or is this your first one? So we we completed a training back in 2018 with the Department of General Services where we trained 75 engineers statewide on wow. high performance building engineering program. A huge success. And really that training has led us to develop other trainings in this space because we know that what they're looking for is an upskilling of the workforce as the industry evolves and as new technologies come down. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, it sounds like I read a little bit on your website. Your husband is expert at that. He's fantastic. Uh -huh. he's, he's fantastic as, as quite frankly, um, thinking about the future of engineering as well as the technology that is really going to help those that are in the field just, just be better at their job, quite frankly. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody that has a facility, you gotta, you gotta be thinking about it. It's, right. Yeah. When is it time to go solar? Are you talking about solar or options? Um, electric well, vehicles? I mean, are you working in that space also making those recommendations? So our space that we like to focus on, because we can't we can't address sort of all of this encompassing. Yeah. What we like to focus on is facilities, uh, the inside and the outside envelope of facilities. So that might include uh, retrofits, um, the garage, like solar panels or lighting, but also inside. So putting in pieces of uh, technology that are going to monitor your internal mm -hmm. system and really help you make decisions, real-time decisions and adjustments so that you can save money and making sure there's a direct connection between you know, how you manage your energy and your, and your real energy savings. Mm -hmm. ah, awesome, awesome. So SMUD must love you. And we, and we love SMUD. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, because they're always looking for consultants and people that can take these kinds of programs out um, I hope they're supporting you. They're part of the collaborative, which is awesome. Yes, they are. And they are supporting and they are in support in this the program. That's awesome. So uh, what does the future look like? You know, I think the future um, in terms of uh, Eco Alpha looks like ones, as we talked about this, Tina, earlier, uh, partnerships and collaborations. I know there, COVID has really um, made it such that um, you have to uh, now look left and right of you, and not just in front of you, about the partnerships and connections that you can make um, and to meet the need and to pivot to meet those needs um, pretty quickly, but do it effectively and also be able to execute. So really, that's what we think the future um, of our small business will be, is to partner um, and address the needs of, of our community. Yeah, I love it. Um, you know, it's like part of part of our, we talked a little bit about how Sacramento is the size of a city where you can get involved in um, some community improvement and you can really affect change. I mean, we're the size of a city where you can meet the city council people, you can work with them, you can get agenda, you can get information onto the agenda, and you can move towards change. You're right. Uh, yeah. Which is, I can see you going in that direction. It's like working with the city of Sacramento in neighborhoods that are uh, changing neighborhoods into uh, successes. One of our core values, uh, one of the last core values is really to uh, empower the communities that we serve so that we live and work in. And, you know, quite frankly, we, we're we passionate about this and we're excited about it. And we know that we're in a city that supports it. So yeah. it's an exciting time. Yeah. So do you know groups like uh, The Hub? Um, I do. Uh, Okay. Are you working with them? I We have not had an opportunity to work with them. Okay. Well, I can introduce you to them. How about pro family and youth? No. Okay. Yeah. So there's, 
there's more. I mean, because you have you're dabbling in uh, working with young people uh, and getting those trainings going, and you're also uh, working with businesses. So you're kind of uh, spread all over the place and and municipalities. Right. So you're really open to to grow. So what do you think in a year? How many people are you going to have on staff? So uh, we we hope to let's just say we hope to uh, triple our staff. We were able to do that this year during COVID. And so the, the strategic goal plan for us is one, I will say that's ambitious, but I'll say we would really love to double our staff, uh, improve uh, our growth um, and, and make sure that it's stable. Mm -hmm. And especially mm -hmm. um, with regards to COVID and the pandemic, which has been um, quite frankly, um, for many small businesses, all actually all in all aspects of small businesses affected business continuity. So we just want to continue to grow, grow steadily um, and grow in the ways that um, we know that there's really a future um, for our business. Well, yeah. And I think the future looks really bright for you and the work that you do. And uh, you're the kind of business that I want to be affiliated with when you're talking about community change and growth and uh, being involved at the neighborhood level in many of your aspects of your, your work, that's where change starts. Right. And I think this is where for in Sacramento, where we've been supported as a small business is by the community. Yeah. And so we, we, we don't overlook that. We focus on that. And in that we grow. So there's a couple of things I want to encourage people that know of 18 year old plus with GEDs or high school diplomas to sign up for this training because it can change their life. And it's in a direction that we know is going. Um, who, who would, what kind of businesses or cities would reach out to you? So we would say cities or municipalities um, in economic development um, divisions, planning divisions, training divisions, right? Oh, yeah. Where they're looking to uh, revitalize neighborhoods, but bring focus on a different aspect, um, not just the infrastructure, um, such as the redevelopment, but specifically for community ownership, training the individuals that live and work there. So again, there's an ownership component. And we have several training programs that are really ripe for meeting the goals of the cities, municipalities, but also um, the nonprofits that are right. looking to expand um, their, uh, their training efforts as well. So, uh, you know what, we're just going to have to get together and be friends forever because I have a lot of people to introduce you to. Fantastic. You know, especially the training aspect. It's where you're really teaching whole neighborhoods and communities to improve their own lives, right? Uh, an investment in training time can change everything. It can. And being exposed to those opportunities and the people uh, or individuals that might have that opportunity uh, waiting for you. So really uh, connecting the dot and the pieces um, in an industry, in an area that we feel there should be broad participation. Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, it just it just sounds like you are uh, you're in the perfect city, and we're lucky to have you uh, bringing all of these new ideas and trainings and being connected. It's like that's my superpower. Connector is my superpower. Um, I, uh, is there any last thoughts that you want to share with me? We have one minute left. Yeah. You know, I'd like to share that we are, um, a, a small business in Sacramento that has really benefited from the network, whether it's the Metro chamber or the Sacramento black chamber of commerce or the California black chamber of commerce. But quite frankly, um, what I've noticed about the community is that it is supported by all. It and is. That has been um, a for Eco Alpha as a small business, a game changer. Yeah. And it is what I know will continue to be the bright light in the community. And we just want to be a part of that as a small business um, as much as we possibly can. 
Well, and bringing excitement to it and being a member of the community. It's like I'm a member of the Black Chamber and have been for years and years and years because it's important that I am a member of all the chambers. You know, it's like you join you join them and then pretty soon you're working on projects with people that you really admire and your network expands. And the work that you're doing in Promise Zones and with young people, I appreciate everything that you bring here. We're so lucky to have you in Sacramento. Don't yeah. leave. You can't go. This is our home. We're excited about being here. So. Okay, good. No more Tuskegee. No more Baltimore. <laughs> Sacramento is your place. You've got to stay here. So thank you for joining me, Mel. I, I do hope we can stay on after this and do a little bit more connection. Everyone, uh, I hope that you share this video with others and you share it with your community and we can build a greater Sacramento together. I'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.